Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you're watching Flick Connection, the show that helps you get more out of movies, and today I want to tell you about the best horror movies you can currently watch on Amazon Prime. So I just recently did a Netflix list. If you want to check out that video, there's a link in the description. And there's also some previous Amazon Prime horror list uh, that had some great movies on them that are just not going to be featured in this one. So if you feel like I left something out very near and dear to your heart, you can go check out some of those older videos. But everyone featured in this video is currently available. Now I'll be brief on my number 10 pick because I'm sure a lot of you have seen it already. But Jigsaw is a surprisingly good reboot for the Saw series. And I say reboot loosely because it is just another entry, another sequel in a long series of movies. However, it does breathe new life into the series. It doesn't really reinvent anything. It is very much a Saw movie, but it doesn't feel tired and worn out. It feels a little bit new and fresh. I got a little burned out on the Saw series and just really wasn't feeling it after so much exposure. But Jigsaw was a nice change of pace. It was familiar, yet new and different at the same time. So if you maybe abandoned the Saw series like I did, Jigsaw would be a great place to pick it back up. Now my number nine pick is a really odd choice, so watch this one with caution. But The Neon Demon, directed by Nicholas Wanding Refn, is a really cool uh, sort of uh, neo '80s kind of a thing. But it's got a it's got a cool vibe, but it's got a very very weird and very wicked storyline. It revolves around a model, a very young model, and sort of this competitive world. But this movie is beautifully shot. The lighting is incredible. The performances are great. I think the movie's really great all the way through, especially for an indie horror flick. Yet, it goes down this really weird rabbit hole as you get further into it. And if you're into weird, you're probably going to dig this movie. If you get turned off by super weird things, uh, just, just know that I warned you on The Neon Demon. <laughs> Now, my number eight pick is a movie called Triangle that revolves around the Bermuda Triangle. And it's actually really cool. Now, it does have some great creepy, spooky horror themes that mostly take place on this like abandoned ghost ship. Yet, you also get some weird, mind-bending, time-altering things because of the Bermuda Triangle aspect. But this one's got great performances. It's a good classic horror vibe that came out sort of in the mid 2000s and it's surprisingly good for one a lot of people have not heard of this one's got some surprisingly good production value some good scares and again that sort of mind bending element from time manipulation but I don't want to say anything other than that the loved ones I've mentioned before it's actually from Australia and is a really cool uh, almost Texas Chainsaw Massacre-esque type of a movie that revolves around prom or whatever they call it in Australia but this one's really great it's very very dark but it's about a teenage girl that asks a boy to the prom uh, when he has another date uh, she and her father her really weird creepy father take matters into their own hands uh, there's power tools there's chicken there's lobotomies there's a dungeon there's all sorts of cool stuff, but this movie looks great, it's super grim, and it's directed really well. It's got some really good tension when it should, and like I said, it's dark, yet it still manages to be entertaining without being like too, too overbearing with this, this grim situation that's unfolding. And so for a campier entry on this list, Basket Case is one I've always liked. Uh, trust me on this one, if you like campy 80s horror that is bloody and gruesome basket case is a great way to go it's about a guy that takes this basket to new york he's sort of like investigating things and then you know spoiler alert this is a reveal to you fairly early what's in the basket is his deformed twin and they're basically going on a killing spree it's a really great grungy kind of grindhouse type of a movie but it's fun at times it's gory at times it's actually a little bit intense at times considering how cheesy some of it is it's a personal favorite of mine like a really great halloween watch but if you're in the mood for some of that kind of 80s silliness basket case is one of the best ones on amazon prime right now for another 80s sort of campy one that i know a lot of people missed Life Force is a really cool movie actually directed by the same guy who did the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre except this one's like 
Alien. It's about uh, some astronauts that go to this this comet in space, and they they encounter some sort of life form. Something's brought back to Earth, and you get almost like this vampire 80s thing with like electricity and lightning and uh, full frontal female nudity and zombies and an apocalypse and just all sorts of crazy stuff mixed together that actually works really well. The first time I saw this movie was fairly recently and I was really surprised at how much it escalated because the beginning's really cool. Like you're in space, there's these alien things, but it just continues to escalate as the story unfolds in a really surprising way. I won't say any more than that, but if you're in the mood for anything remotely like that and you somehow missed life force definitely check it out it has been on amazon prime for a little while so i personally don't think it'll be there much longer the revenant is a really cool sort of horror comedy and no this is not the one with leonardo dicaprio it's got the same title but this one is about a guy who literally dies and comes back from the dead and it's not really a horror comedy like tucker and dale versus evil or anything like that it's this cool, kind of crazy story with a lot of horror elements, and it's just got a good sense of humor on top of it. But it's got a good, cool edge to it because there's some gore in it. Uh, it's, it takes place in modern day, but like I said, it's edgy. It's kind of fun. I'm surprised this one doesn't have more of a cult following by now, but I loved it when it came out, and it just recently got added to Amazon Prime, so I'm actually excited to see that it's added, making it one of the better recommendations on this list. Now, I've talked about a couple of campy 80s movies so far, and I talked about a sort of modern retake on an 80s vibe with The Neon Demon. The best of both worlds is In the Inferno, which is a really cool, mysterious, creepy 80s movie that has some of the best lighting I've ever seen in a movie. All the, all the lighting is blue and pink and neon, and there's... Uh, really slow but intense sequences that kind of the story revolves around these witches and it's just very unique and different and I would recommend this to anyone that uh, can be a little more patient with their horror movies it doesn't need a lot of action now there's plenty that happens in this one but you're gonna have to kind of wait for it to reveal itself slowly so if you like kind of modern, fast-paced horror movies and you need that sort of adrenaline, uh, this one might bore you a little bit, but if you like more of the art house stuff and you're into what you're seeing with the clips I'm showing you, Inferno is not only a beautiful film, but it's super creepy and just an excellent watch, especially for like movie buffs that have yet to discover this one. <sighs> Clive Barker's Nightbreed does have a very, very strong cult following. If Clive Barker sounds familiar to you, uh, he's responsible for the Hellraiser series. And Nightbreed, to me, is a cooler movie with a lot more going on. I wish this one worked out where we got a whole series of these. It's really unfortunate that we did not. But not only are there strong horror elements, but there's strong fantasy elements. Crazy costumes and characters and set pieces and, and just the amount of stuff crammed into this one as well is just unbelievable. This one, like I said, it has a cult following. If you have yet to discover Nightbreed, now is the perfect time. It's not always available on streaming services. It's actually kind of special that it's on Prime right now. If you like any sort of cult movies, there's a very, very strong chance that this is going to be one of your new favorite horror movies. And just a quick honorable mention, Anonymous 616 is currently available on Prime. Uh, it's one I've talked about before, so that's why it's not really on this list, but it's really intense. It's one of the most adult movies I've ever seen, so uh, be warned. Uh, do not watch this one if you're sensitive or have a weak stomach or anything, but uh, the actor Daniel DeWeldon stars in this one. He does an incredible job. He was a recent guest on the podcast, a really great episode of the podcast. Uh, learned a lot talking to him. So if you're interested in that type of content as well, you can go over and check out the Flick Connection podcast channel. There will be a link to that in the description. And my number one pick should come as no surprise to some of you. It is 2018's Hereditary, which not only is one of the best horror movies of 2018, it's really one of the best we've got in a really long time. Now, I know not all of you will agree with that because there are some odd elements to it. There are some things I thought could have made it better. 
Nevertheless, it's very difficult to name a horror movie that has come out in recent years that tops Hereditary. And one of the things I really liked about it is it used elements from classic horror movies. I didn't feel like it was stealing from those movies as much as it was paying homage to them and also sort of reinventing and doing some new things at the same time. Without giving anything away, I personally really appreciated the way this movie ended, yet I can also appreciate why some people would not have liked the end. However, even if you don't love the way this movie ends, it is an incredible ride, it's intense, and it does feel fresh. I, I gotta say, I think this is going to be one of those horror movies that we watch still years from now, 10, 20 years from now, which is why it's the number one pick on my list. If you like this episode, definitely click the like button, leave a comment, let me know what you will be watching in the comments below. If you want to support Flick Connection, you can do so a number of ways. I've got an Amazon shop. If you're going to be buying Blu-rays anyway, you can follow that link in the description and get really good deals and it'll give me a little bit of kickback. You can become a Patreon supporter. Uh, you could buy a t-shirt in the merch shop. You could even get a free t-shirt if you become a Patreon supporter, depending on which tier you pick. Whatever you choose to do, I appreciate the view. I appreciate the likes, the comments, the shares, but I will keep making episodes just like this one as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this episode and you will see me on the next one.